Today, we have a very special guest, Kirsten Hammond. She is here and she's sharing all about how brand strategy can impact your business. And even more than that, she's sharing how having a brand strategy and a brand identity and knowing what that was, how it impacted her business in the last couple of years, allowed her to quickly open a membership, scale her TPT business, and create a very profitable curriculum. And she's talking all about how you can create your brand strategy today. You're not going to want to miss this. So let's go ahead and let's meet Kirsten. Hey, Kirsten, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Great. I'm so excited. You just interviewed me to be on your podcast. And so we've already had such a wonderful conversation already. So I'm really excited to keep this going. Can you start by just telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm Kirsten Hammond. I live in Texas outside of Austin. And I taught for about eight, nine years in the Houston area and in the Austin area before I left the classroom in 2021 after having my second son. But currently a work from home mom. I work on my TPT business and, you know, wrangle my three small children of ages eight months to four years. My TPT store is the Southern Teach. And then I also work with other teacher sellers on their branding and designing their product listings. So when we first talked about setting up this interview and kind of doing like an exchange of podcasts, one of the things that you mentioned was talking about brand strategy. And I thought that was absolutely fabulous because not only have we never had anyone talk about brand strategy on this podcast before, but I think that there's a lot of, I'm not going to say confusion, but maybe oversimplified versions of what people think a brand strategy is. So I'm really excited to hear from you today on this. Can you just start us off with talking about what is a brand strategy? What is that? Sure. So yes, I'm totally with you of like, I know in the TPT world, when we talk about brands, we're really like, kind of referring kind of to the surface level, like logo, colors, make sure you have some fonts, like that kind of thing. It's usually the trifecta, logo, colors, fonts. And that's pretty much the extent of branding in a lot of conversations. And so I am kind of talking more about the like what you don't see. This is brand strategy. It's basically a long-term plan that outlines how you will position yourself to achieve goals and objectives for your business. So that's like an over surface level definition, I guess, if you want to say. And I like to kind of think Of course, I'm a very visual person. So if you think about an iceberg, what we see on the surface above the surface of the water is our brand identity. So that's thinking about typography and colors and logos and banners and pretty much anything you see on your social media account or your TPT storefront or your website. Those are all, you know, surface level things that people can actually see and possibly, you know, if you're you sell physical products, that's like what you can tangibly touch, you know, all of those things. And the brand strategy is underneath the surface. It's much larger as like what a typical iceberg looks like. And it involves a lot more things into it. It, You're thinking about your values, you're thinking about your messaging, personality, your target audience, all of those things that it's not something that they are able to see. So that's kind of the difference between what we talk about with logos and colors. That's all surface level stuff. That's all stuff anybody can see, but the brand strategy is underlying, but it's probably more important than the visual part because without having a set brand strategy, you don't really have a set focus long-term. You can get by probably short-term with just figuring out your colors and stuff, but without a strategy, you're really selling yourself short because you don't have a lot of traction and what your total vision is for your TPT business. And I know it's hard because when we're all starting out, we're just uploading resources and we're just like, oh, I can make money from this. Like that's literally how I started my business. I was just a student teacher and I saw that there was a TPT website and I was like, oh, I created some resources. I'm going to upload those up there and see if I make money from it. And then really didn't do much with it until, you know, fast forward to 2020. So I've been there where I didn't have any sort of strategy in place. I didn't really see the long-term vision of what I wanted to do with my TPT store. But of course, that's something you can always change. It's not the end of the world. It's not, I have to start over, start from scratch. And even if you did just focus on your logo and your colors and your fonts, just like I did in 2020, I was like, that's what I'm going to focus on. You can still go back 
back to a strategy and then from there make tweaks to your visual brand or your brand identity if needed. So there's different ways you can do it. If you're already thinking like, oh, I have no strategy, that's okay. You can still create one. So I think one of the things that I see a lot whenever I'm auditing stores and it's really obvious who has a brand strategy and who doesn't. And sometimes a brand strategy for someone, they may not even realize that they have one. Like it's not something that they've written down on paper and they've organized it, but they know in their head, I'm creating these specific types of resources to meet this specific need in the market. And they already know who specifically they're serving. They know they're serving that fifth grade ELAR teacher who has sped students inside of her gen ed classroom and is trying to make everything work for all of her students without everybody doing something different, right? So they know specifically who they're serving without writing it down. They kind of have a little bit of that brand strategy there already, but I can open up a TPT store and I can tell, and I'm sure you can too, like when somebody doesn't have a brand strategy, they've got posters, they've got classroom decor, and you can go and sort by most recent. It's literally like classroom decor, math activity, ELAR activity. Oh, you know what? I'm going to make these, this Bitmoji product over here, which is a whole other issue in and of itself, yeah. but like they're, I'm going to make this product over here. You know what? I really need some bin labels. I'm going to go make some bin labels and everything is all over the place inside of their store. And it's obvious that they don't have a clear vision. And I think for many of us, when we started on TPT, we heard so many seasoned sellers who were successful say, just start creating things that you make for your classroom and see what sells. And I'm not saying that that's not going to work for some people or that that hasn't worked for some people. But if you're not having this brand strategy and you're not planning things out in the very beginning, like what you're going to be talking about today, you're just going to end up creating a hodgepodge of resources and wasting a whole lot of your time more than likely on resources that are never going to sell. Yeah. And then people come to your store and they like that one really great item that you did, but you don't have anything else like it. You've just got a hodgepodge of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially now, I think in the last couple of years, more so than maybe seven years ago or eight years ago, it's probably more important now than ever to have some type of clear direction and start that way. Full force, know who you're targeting, know what type of resources you're going to put in your TPT store. When you and I both started, I was 2013 and I'm not sure what year you were. 2016. But, okay. Yeah. Th those years we could have like, what we did was like, we would just put up random resources like this might sell. Okay, we'll try that. We'll try this one. And we got money from that. You know, we got sales from that. Right now, I don't think that would fly as much, if at all. So that's why I think having a strategy is so integral, especially now with, you know, the economy and what teachers are really looking for. And even the fact with AI into play, I'm just going to throw that in there because teachers know what AI is. And I know that there are teachers out there that are using AI to make lesson plans, like I can enter in, write 20 questions for task cards and they yeah. have that right there. They may not need to go on TPT. So you have to kind of get a couple steps ahead of them and think about, okay, how can I make this where it's not something that they can just input into AI and make something that they can only get from you. They can't just get it anywhere on the internet. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk about building this brand strategy, because I can imagine that there are some people who are listening right now and they're like, okay, well, I've been just creating things and putting up things that I already made for my classroom. Like, what do I, what do I need to do? Where should someone start when it comes to building a brand strategy? I know a huge part of building that brand strategy is knowing who you're serving. If I'm trying to build a brand strategy, what kind of questions should I be asking myself about my customers or about my audience? Like, what do I need to know about them in order to build that brand strategy? Yeah, absolutely. So the very first thing you want to think of, even before you go into describing your target audience, would be to understand what your brand or TPT business's purpose is and what your values are. So thinking about why you're doing what you're doing in the first place, what problem does your brand solve? What values does it stand for? Do you have expertise in it or experience in it as, you know, as a classroom teacher or just in general working with other educators? And then also just having some type of vision. Where do you see your business in a year, in five years, in 10 years? So thinking what 
values are important to you. And there's a whole bunch of range of values, like having products that are easy to implement. And maybe you're really somebody who was like, I need to save time. I don't like super cutesy stuff where I have to cut out a bunch of things and paste them all together. I want something that's really easy to print. And I want something where I can sell resources that are easy to print, easy to implement. One of the things I value in my own TPT business is having Teaks aligned resources, standards based, because I, I know that I the back of my hand. It's something that I know because I had to implement it for a decade. And then also just having culturally relevant and appropriate and accurate resources, especially with social studies. Like I don't do cutesy clip art for social studies. Like I'm, I'm not about that at all. I think it's important to have something that is historically accurate and is appropriate for not only the age group, but the topic that is being talked about. So those are my values I have along with some others, but having that in place is important. And then from there, you go into understanding who your target audience is. So think about what your audience needs, what their pain points are, what their purchasing behaviors are, their desires, what are they really looking for in a resource? And, you know, thinking about AI, like going back to that, maybe they don't want something that's like, you know, I can just print it and it, I can just type it in AI and just make it myself. They're, may, they might be thinking about like, I am really stuck on some type of, like, I need some type of curriculum, like I, something that I have for math or science or social study is not really meeting my needs. I need something robust, but also something that is really easy to implement and easy to understand. We have a lot of teachers now that are not maybe fully certified the traditional way, more so now than before. So maybe they are probably looking for resources that are laying out step by step what they need to do, how they need to teach certain topics. So that's something to also keep in mind. So these are just ideas of just trying to get into the head of your ideal target audience. And it also aligns with what your values are and what the whole idea of your brand is. Then going into the third step is is researching your competitors, not trying to copy them. We don't want to do that, of course, but seeing what they're currently selling and seeing how you can position yourself. It's what they call brand positioning, positioning yourself to have something unique. So even though they're all selling upper elementary math resources, what is unique about what your resources are? How are they different? How can you differentiate yourself from what your competitors are doing? So is it something that is more robust or price point wise, or maybe it gives like really detailed step-by-step -step instructions? Maybe your competitors are like kind of more general and are just like, here are some lessons, here are some activities, here are some worksheets, but maybe you have something more robust that teachers appreciate and it's just something that differentiates yourself. So those are some things you want to ask yourself is how can you position your brand, your resources to be more unique than your competitors? So that's something you want to think about. And then the last part of your brand strategy would be your messaging. So it's kind of building on each other. You're taking everything in those previous steps and coming up with some type of messaging and tone and personality that aligns with how you want to communicate what you sell and you know what you are doing in your business to your target audience. So if you are primarily marketing to newer teachers who may have not had a traditional background in education or they're getting alternative certifications or may not be certified at all, you want to have that messaging a little bit different than, let's say, people have been teaching 20, 30 years. Like you don't want to try to target those teachers that have been teaching for over 20 years and they don't need some type of step-by-step -step script of how to teach something. So that's what you want to communicate in your, you know, what you sell and whether you're on social media or you have an email list or a Facebook group, all of that can come into play. And then messaging, I feel like is because I've looked at different sources and some people will say messaging is part of your brand identity and then messaging is part of your brand strategy. So that's kind of where I see like messaging is that last step before you start connecting your strategy with what people see on the outside. So that's kind of where you can start thinking about creating a mood board and having a color palette that reflects 
the messaging that you want and the audience you're trying to target and, you know, all that good stuff. So messaging is kind of like that last step before you start thinking about your brand visuals. Can you give us an example of what that looked like in your own business? So it's actually something I've recently started like niching down. In 2020, when I was like being active, I was pretty much selling K through five resources, all subjects, because that's what I taught. You know, that's my experience. And very quickly, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And I started focusing more on upper elementary with an emphasis on ELA and social studies. So that's what I've been creating in the last few years. And more recently, I've noticed a gap in the quality of social studies resources, especially that are TEKS aligned and in Texas, you know, I'm sure you're probably aware there are some resources that are great, but usually most of the time districts don't provide social studies curriculum. And I even remember in the classroom, not even a few years ago, we had textbooks that were saying that George W. Bush was still the president. Oh and that was, that was, that was like what we were given. So we had to go from different sources. I would go on TPT trying to find what I need, but I'm still like trying to pick and pull different resources. And when I first started out, that's something I had in the back of my mind. I'm like, okay, maybe one of these days I'll try to create some type of social studies curriculum that's actually TEKS aligned and all that good stuff, like actually encompasses all of the standards that need to be taught in third and fourth and fifth grade. And, you know, fast forward to last year where it's like still the same problem, different year. And that's kind of where I, I was like, you know what, I think this is kind of something that I need to start to kind of hone in on. I already had social studies resources that were selling really well. One of them being my Black History Month posters. Like it's it's a bestseller pretty much in the winter months. And I kind of thought to myself, well, you know, to stand out a little bit more, I think what I need to do and also just to kind of kind of elevate what I'm doing and kind of take it even further. I wanted to create some type of curriculum that it's in units. It's everything that val like I value, which is something that's like really easy to implement, low prep, something that like it's you just kind of like a print and teach type of thing where there's slideshows and students can go through all of the lessons and take notes. So that's something that I'm in the process of creating right now. But I also had a membership that I launched this past July, actually end of the month with a resource library of all of my social studies resources. But I guess backtracking, I knew that I had a lot of audience members who were social studies teachers and they're looking for rigorous and really great social studies resources out there, but they're, it's just like, they're not what they're finding. I created a lead magnet to get more social studies teachers on my email list. That did really well. That's an example of how I use that in my own TPT store. I saw there was a very big gap and there's not really great social studies resources out there. And let me tell you, even though I launched this curriculum in the last like couple of weeks, it's selling like hotcakes. Like, and it's what's probably contributing to what's going to be my best month on TPT ever. So it's, it's definitely something that teachers are looking for and needing and buying. And so I'm already seeing like something that I have kind of has been sitting on my ideas list a few years ago. And in the last year, I'm like implementing it. I'm seeing a lot of, you know, really great results with this new strategy that I've put in place in the last year. So I had a really great membership launch. Like I have members in my membership and they have access to my resources for social studies. And then on top of that, I've got the curriculum that I'm adding throughout the year. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm really excited about it just because like, I know it's something teachers need. It's something that I needed when I was in the classroom and it's something that I wish I had. So that's kind of my main goal or desire for what I want out there, I guess. Your vision for your business. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. I love that. You, you know, you said so many incredible things there. And I think one of the biggest takeaways for me is that when you first started or even just a few years back, you were a K through five resource creator. Like you created K through five resources for all grade levels, all K through five teachers. And if you had not created some clarity for your business and for your brand, this membership probably wouldn't have happened. No. This curriculum that you're writing probably wouldn't have happened. And that's a lot of money on the table that wouldn't have been made. And that's now I'm like, 
yeah, I'm kicking myself now because I'm like, so I had this idea three years ago sitting in my little Google Doc. It's kind of like, why wasn't I doing this sooner? But I think part of the reason was I was a little scared. You know, it's a lot of work to do. And I knew it was what people needed. But for whatever reason, I just thought like, you know, I'll just make the easier resources right now. And it just kind of like the perfect storm of I've got my three kids and I can work through nap time. I have the ability to stay at home and I have more time to actually work on it. So I think that's probably part of the reason why I waited so long. But I do wish that I did start it sooner. Well, when you think about it, I think so many times when we think about really niching down, especially in the early years, it seems scary because what if I niche down into the wrong thing? Right. Right. But really what it does for your business is it frees you up to put your energy and effort into something that you're really good at. Mm -hmm. And it would be extremely difficult to create a resource library for K through five, all subjects, right? Like that would be a mountainous task that would take you years and years and years to get to the point where you would have enough materials to fill something like that. But then also it would take you longer to build an audience of K through five because it's so much broader. Yeah. So when you niche down, it provides so much clarity for your business and it allows you, it kind of frees you up. So we kind of think like I'm going to be boxed in, but Mm -hmm. it really just provides you so much freedom to dream and to set goals for your business because it would be a daunting task to create that curriculum for all grade levels, all subjects. Oh yeah. It would be extremely daunting to do the membership for that, all grade levels, all subjects. But Mm -hmm. just saying, I'm really good at creating social studies resources. I can create them accurately. I'm providing, you know, TEKS aligned resources and resources that are appropriate and accurate. And when you know what you're good at and you just focus in on that, it opens so many doors for your business, which is, I think, such a great example of what you're talking about today with how important this brand strategy can be. It's not just about like, oh, I'm just going to get focused. It's really about allowing you to dream. And I know that there are so many teacher authors who want to do the membership thing. They want to do the course thing. They want to do those things. And starting with that brand strategy is really a key piece of being able to do some of those things later on. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know it is kind of like, cause there are some things I did kind of out of order, like, but I, so some of the things I did, I would not recommend, but yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. Absolutely. So you kind of touched on this earlier, but I do want to come back to this, this branding, you know, cause I mentioned before, if you think about niching down, it can be kind of scary because what if I niche down into the wrong thing? Is this something that's set in stone? Like if I write down a brand strategy for myself, if I create this vision for my business and it's not working, then is this something that I can modify or adapt or change as I grow my business and learn my audience? So resoundingly, yes, this is not set in stone. I should say you can absolutely change what you need to, when you need to, if you're, you know, of course you don't want to like get one month into it and be like, "Ah, it's not working and then switch, give it some time of course. But yes, you you do have to modify and adapt your strategy as you are learning more about your audience and what they're purchasing, what their needs are. And that's kind of going into like that. My example is the more I've gotten clear in the type of resources that I need to sell based on what's selling in my store, I saw my social studies resources were selling and I saw that there was a need for more social studies resources that are TEKS aligned. And so that's kind of what I started hyper-focusing on, especially in the last year. So this has resulted in, you know, better sales for me. I haven't been personally affected by personalized search or the negative aspect of it. Like I've been fortunate to sustain my business despite all of the things happening. And of course, every month, you know, anything can change at any time. But as of now, I'm super happy that I've been able to sustain and grow in my business. So yeah, I mean, yes, it it helps you know what you need to create more of and what you need to do less of. And this can even go into like your strategy in general, like how you're going to be sharing your message with your audience. If you're not seeing traction with you know, a certain social media app or anything like that, then do less of that. Like if you're seeing like more people are really liking this lead magnet that you have and they keep opting into it, lean into that and, you know, 
you can adapt your strategy based on that. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the fun side of branding for just a minute. Where does your visual branding with your fonts and your logos and all the stuff that people want to do Mm -hmm. besides myself. I don't like, I actually don't enjoy that part of it. Where does that meet your brand story or your brand identity? So I mentioned earlier how your messaging is kind of like that cusp of like what they see below the surface and what they see in the, your brand identity. So kind of aligning with your messaging, you also want to describe your personality with adjectives that, and those adjectives should mirror your brand. Like those colors that you pick, all of those visuals should mirror those adjectives you select or the type of messaging or tone. So if you're, let's say you are trying to attract newer science teachers. You want to kind of have that same type of playful language, or maybe your brand is really fun and vibrant and encouraging and bright. You probably want to have something with really bright colors, which I know a lot of TPT stores already have, but you know, thinking about how you can mirror your personality, like whatever adjectives you describe your brand as, you want those colors that you pick and the fonts you pick to mirror that. So that's one of them. And then also just like having that emotion, like having a visual brand can help you connect with audience members. Let's you know, we know that there's tons of different niches out there and there's probably like 50 TPT sellers for every niche. And one person may not like your brand, but they might like another person's brand and their style. And that's okay. You're not trying to get everybody in this specific niche coming to your store and buying your resources. There's going to be people who align with or connect with you, whether it's like through your stories that you tell. I'm trying to think of a brand that there's one, it's not even TPT related, but Bailey Sarian, she'll do her makeup while she's talking about true crime stories. Oh, right. Yeah. So it's like, it's just like her style, you know, how she is. I resonate with her, like the stories she tells, not even related to the actual crime stories, but she'll just tell random things about herself. So her personal brand is really somebody who I resonate with. And I don't even like, I know there's other people doing the same thing where they're talking about true crime on YouTube, but I only listen to her because she's really funny. She's got a really great sense of humor. That same thing can happen with you in your TPT resources on any platform that you're on. So have fun with your visual brand and how you show and perceive or resonate with your audience and how that kind of relates with your brand strategy. I love that. And I think also one of the things that you mentioned earlier when you were talking about doing the market research and taking a look at your competitors and, you know, not to copy them, obviously, but that can really play a role with your visual branding as well. And it might be something that you look at when you're doing that market research, because I found other people who every niche is different. Every niche kind of gravitates towards a certain certain type of say covers or previews or colors or, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And I think sometimes people forget that those two things are woven together, your visual branding and your brand strategy, Mm -hmm. those are woven together and it's designed to attract a certain type of person and not just be your two favorite colors that you really like that you put yeah. you know, together, you know? Yeah. So kind of taking a look at if you don't know, like what colors do I pick or where do I start? Like taking a look when you're doing that market research that you were talking about earlier, do you notice a trend in what seems to be selling, which shows, you know, what people are kind of attracted to, or, you know, seeing trends or any patterns in what people in that particular niche are attracted to. And just keeping that in mind when you're doing your visual branding can be really helpful or using that as like, why are they attracted to that? Like, what does that make them feel like? Are they attracted to it because it's calming? Are they attracted to it because it's energizing and it's happy? Thinking about that when you're choosing your own branding too can really help. Yes, definitely. And one thing I will mention kind of like expanding on that, because I've seen this happen, like, there's been somebody, I guess, who wants to sell similar resources as a very established seller. And so I've seen it happen where they're just like taking the same colors and the product cover looks and like making the same type of resources. And this like, this particular case that I remember is like, I remember messaging this seller and I'm like, this person is copying your like 
And she's like, yeah, I know. Like I've, I've already reached out to her about it and she won't change it. And it's so frustrating because, you know, all the work that people go yeah. into trying to do this. But I will say, even if this happens, like I really hope that, you know, it doesn't happen to you. But know that even though they are copying your visual brand, they're not copying. They don't know your strategy. So that's something you still have in your back pocket. You're always going to be ahead of the game because you're the one that, number one, started that visual brand and how it looks, your brand identity. And you, only you know what the whole underlying factors are, what the whole plan is. And I will say that I've seen this person launch stuff like outside of TPT. And from what I can see, she's doing very great. Even with those people copying her, there's always going to be knockoffs of, you know, brands that we see, not just in TPT, but anywhere. There's going to be people knocking off different products and services. But the the one thing you have in your favor is having that strategy in place. So you're always going to be ahead of the game. Well, Kirsten, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your own story and for sharing your expertise on brand identity and brand strategy, because I think it's something that a lot of times we kind of overlook and we don't consider that whenever we're building our business and building our store. And it can be something that can really stunt our growth, both on TPT and off TPT. So I thank you so much for coming on today and for sharing. Where can listeners find you? Yes. Yeah, so I'm so glad that you had me on the podcast. Thank you so much. You can find me at the Southern Teach Designs. That's my handle on Instagram for TPT sellers because I do share a lot of branding tips and you know design tips. I have a podcast, the Creative Teacher Podcast, as well that you can listen into every week. And my website is the Southern Teach Designs.com if you're ever interested in any branding services or any other offers there. You can always head to my website to learn more from me there. Absolutely. I know you do like branding as far as visual branding. Do you also help business owners identify and like solidify their brand strategy? Do you do things like that too? So I actually just added that service a okay. couple of days ago. Yeah. So I offer, I am now offering one-to-one brand strategy sessions, 90 minutes. It's we meet on Zoom and we go, I work through the process, the four steps that I mentioned earlier in this episode. I go through that with you and we kind of just go from each step and talk about that. So that's something I'm really excited to be offering with awesome. the custom services that I have. I love that. Well, that's awesome. I'll make sure and put your links down inside of the description. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks so much for being here. If you want to connect with Kirsten, you can find links to her website and how you can work with her down inside of the description. You can also find the link to her podcast for TPT sellers down inside of the description as well. Highly recommend you go subscribe to her podcast. I think you'll really enjoy it. Thanks so much for being here, you guys. And I will see you right back here next week.